<sighs> Howdy folks. Have a little bit of a drive between locations. So uh figured I'd record something again while I'm driving. Might do one or two more today and just stagger them in. Um so I had a thought. And I don't know the answer to it. <clears throat> the, the main thought, suppose science were moving 50 to 70 years ahead of its time throughout American history. Okay? And so, let's, say, let's just pick 70 years because that works for this specific number or for this thought exercise um so okay american it, 19 what 45 was the end of world war ii i know a lot of world war ii history but i'm terrible with dates and that's sad but anyway okay so end of world war ii we have cell phones, we have internet, we have laptops, like what we've got now, basically. But we just beat Nazis, okay. Um, and then, suppose the coronavirus happened then. Late 40s, early 50s. We know everything about it, or people living in that alternate reality, know everything about it that we know. Here's my question. Do those people accept the new government regulations or not? I don't know. I do know, I believe it was the Battle of Spring Hill, Tennessee. There were actually a bunch of World War II veterans that stormed the uh, halls of power in this city and revolted uh, the mayor of this city was being uh, quite a um, jerk and he was overthrown with armed force uh, my understanding is that there weren't there wasn't uh, there was a firefight but I don't believe that anyone got killed there may have been some minor injuries missed shots hitting hitting and ricocheting and debris but I don't believe that anyone was seriously wounded and no one was jeez come flying up a narrow road like that you idiot people I'm driving this narrow pass downhill that's cliffside. The only reason I drive it is it's a handy cut through between yard cutting locations. And this one guy was flying up, but I'm in low gear going downhill riding the brakes. It's about a one and a half lane road in this area. This guy was coming up at doing 30 around a blind turn, no less. All right. Got to make room for somebody to come through. Ah, oh, crap. Sorry, folks. But that's just something that I got thinking, you know, if you, okay, take this one step further. It what, okay, if people in 1950s America would not have taken this sort of uh, government, direct government control of everyday life. 
Would people of the 60s have taken it? Would people of the 70s have taken it? Would the 80s have taken it? Would the, the 90s or early 2000s have taken it? Where, if there was a point in time where Americans would have said uh, dangerous liberty over, over safe tyranny, Okay, you could find that at any point in our country's founding where people would not have taken this sort of government power and would have revolted. That's fairly easy to do. Especially if you go back into the late 17, early 1800s because they had just overthrown a tyrannical government and they probably would have done it again even if it was the government they just made. Okay. So if you find if you come to a point in history that you think no they wouldn't have stood for it even with the risks sure shops might have limited their capacity on their own and, and like a lot of business owners are are getting in trouble for violating these orders there was a, a style a hair salon owner in Texas that has been jailed and slapped with a $7,000 fine. She, since she's self-employed, she didn't get the uh, the $1,200, which considering she's been out of work for two months, that's nothing in the grand scheme of things financially. Uh, she and some of her employees are skipping meals so that their kids don't have to, okay? She decided to go back to work in defiance of the government order. Um, and she got in big trouble. But she was not doing walk-ins. She was doing by appointment only. And they were using uh, gloves, masks, and everything on everybody. So if you came in to get your hair cut, you were expected to have on gloves and a mask. And as I'm giving you, a, as she was giving a haircut, uh, she was wearing gloves and a mask. Uh, she was not using her waiting room. Everybody that came in were socially distanced. And the waiting room was your car. I don't... I don't see the problem in it. I think the government being able to decide which business is and is not essential is a power that they shouldn't have. The market will decide that. If the government had simply put out the risks and everything and let people decide what they were going to do, because, okay, all the essential businesses have started advertising the things that they do anyway to make their business safe. I used to work pizza. Uh, pa Papa John's and Domino's are both, I think it's Papa John's or Domino's, I don't know, but one of the big franchise delivery chains. Uh, after our after your pizza is removed from our 450 degree oven, it's touched by no one until it reaches your door. And so I used to work for a delivery service. That's normal. The food comes out of the oven, you spatula, it out of the pan, slot it onto, and the thing is, the pizza's 450 degrees, you're not going to be grabbing it with your hands, and you're wearing food service gloves, but then you use the pizza cutter, once it's in the box, and you close the box. It's pretty straightforward that no one touches it. So, a lot of businesses that have been deemed non-essential could have been allowed to innovate the way that they do business just during this time um, by only having so many customers in at a time. Uh, a lot of businesses are doing that. My wife had to go to Lowe's the other day. There was a line at Lowe's. Uh, they're operating at half or a third of fire marshal rated capacity right now. So a lot of but the thing is, like a lot of businesses can't even afford that. Food service industry operates on the margins of staying open. Sure. Ah, gotta get out of here. 
car popped around the corner. Sorry about that, folks. I do not have a phone holder in my truck. But um, the markup on food is unreal at food, in food service places. A uh, good buddy of mine is a retired chef. He went to chef school, knows all the ins and outs of the business. And the markup on food is unreal. But when you consider all your operating costs, your return on investment overall isn't that big because you've got to pay your wait staff, you've got to pay uh, business insurance, you've got to pay, you know, your property taxes, your business taxes, um, whatever lease or mortgage you've got on the place and all your utilities, which businesses use a lot of electricity by comparison to homes. So, a lot of businesses, sure, food service, if they were, if they tried to operate at a 20 to 30% capacity, it might have been more cost effective to simply close down, but they would have at least had the opportunity to try to make it work at lower capacity versus just be closed. Because, okay, if you put on, if the government did nothing as far as closures, if they, if they came on and did the reports and gave the risk analysis and the current things that we know, which we don't know everything about this virus right now, we won't for a while, but told them what we know and what we think we know, but did not close one thing, did not do anything, I know that there would have been an initial, there could have been an initial overrun at hospitals, but a lot of people would have been taking a lot of the precautions that have been handed down from government level anyway, just to be safe. Full. So after this is over, I 
kind of expect for the same thing to happen. People that have been out of church for a while to come back, but also expect the regular church members to be playing it a little more cautious because they know where they can catch the streaming and uh, more one-on-one -on -one, uh, Bible studies and whatnot through uh, social media and video streaming and or video conferencing. my opinion, I could be wrong. I know our specific church, we're talking about doing two services, only using half the pews and encouraging social distancing between families and whatnot. So, every other pew being roped off, that's a thing that we're talking about. Um, there's a lot of unknowns here, but I, I think that a lot of people would have played it safe anyway. And in my opinion, there's some of the, some governors have not played it safe enough. And not that I'm pro state, you know, state takeover of uh, our safety because I don't think that they're qualified and can act fast enough. But um, the New York City governor, mayor, had let the subways run round the clock until just recently and then started closing them down overnight for sanitizing but I think that that's kind of a moot point because if you have one person get on the train and touch a thing that had coronavirus you know in the first three hours of the day it's contaminated the rest of the day and also he mandated that if a nursing home patient was found to have coronavirus, the nursing home had to take them back, which I don't see how the governor has that authority. That's a privately run business. I, that, that, that's weird. That's New York governor, not New York mayor. I apologize, but there's a lot of idiocy is happening in the midst of all this, too, from elected officials. Um, thing is like and I'm not picking on Democrat or Republican or anything but in my opinion by and large I am capable of taking care of the things that concern me directly you know whether it's grocery shopping um, putting food on the table work and things like that just making sure my house is in relative order overall. I'm also capable enough of helping out those I care about when they need it. I don't know that, and I'm capable of taking the precautions that are needed in a situation like this. I don't know that I'm capable of determining every precaution that everyone in every classification in every business and every line of work in every strata of income in every neighborhood in every city in every locale in every non-infected area of the state needs to take so i think that government is a big slow moving thing and i don't think it's capable of making the quick decisions necessary i trust pe i trust people more than i trust government I trust people that I disagree with on everything more than I trust government. So, I think that uh, I forget where I was going with that. But anyway, that's that was the gist of what I wanted to say. That. I don't think government's really capable of handling this as much as people want them to. And I don't think that the government should be handling this the way that they are. But what can I do? I know that there have been numerous protests at some of the more uh, locked down states. I know that there have been numerous business owners that have defied orders of closure due to the fact that the government hasn't been able to, the government has wronged them in a sense and has not compensated them. 
essentially, I've heard this, I'm stealing this analogy because it works, okay? I'll admit it's stolen. I'll even cite my source, The Ben Shapiro Show. If I were to drive my truck through your living room, I owe you money to make that right. Which I see as being very fair. And since I have insurance, it falls on my insurance company to make that right. Up to the dollar amount prescribed by my insurance, and if there's an overage there, then I owe you the rest of that money. That seems relatively fair to me. Well, in a lot of cases, due to the fact the government's not really good at anything, um, they have driven a car through people's businesses, but not written the check to make it right. So you've got people that have taken out business loans for storefront, for inventory, for merchandising, whatever, that are in, that are in debt or have monthly overhead expenses that even when you shut down don't go away. The government has told them to close down and are not financially compensating them for their cooperation. So, the government has wronged a lot of people in all this. Um, and a lot of that is due to the fact that, okay, sure, they set up the, the CARES Act that passed the $7 trillion stimulus. Okay, fine, but they're having issues getting the money out, they can't get approvals fast enough, no banks are wanting to back these loans because people aren't generating any income right now. There, It's a, it's a whole uh, series of unfortunate events, I guess would be the way to put it, that has happened, that have caused roadblocks at every level where people are putting in for these grants or loans or what have you and they can't get them. I think the best way to do it would be to give businesses less money, but tell the banks if this, if all the lockdowns last three months, what seems to be the general consensus to add three months on the tail end of the loan, and you get to charge the monthly interest payments on the delay. So if you have, say, a $100,000 loan that you just started, and then you got put out of work, and no money coming in because you didn't qualify for unemployment or whatever, uh, what happens to you is, and you got 3% interest, 3% of that's $100, or $300, sorry, 3% interest is $300, so you now owe $100,900 on your mortgage when you start resuming payments. I think that would be the fairest way to do it to everybody. But, like I've said before, government is stupid. So, anyway, um, I'm almost to my next job site. That's kind of what I was wanting to tell y'all today. So, anyway, y'all stay safe out there. Thanks for tuning in. Like, share, comment, subscribe, notification bell. See ya.